Now, President Uhuru Kenyatta and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga are this week expected to finalize collection of the minimum of one million signatures in support of their Building Bridges Initiative referendum push. This developments come as key leaders and several interest groups continue reviving proposals of the referendum bill expected to radically shake up the country's political and governance structure. But how is the BBI referendum likely to influence the Kenyatta succession politics? Our political affairs reporter Murimi Mwangi interrogates in this week's House of Cards. Fellow Kenya. Anto you born? Anza liwa match. Yo match mzi. Referendum. The career politician and his handlers knew that the plebiscite had not just shot down the draft constitution, but also seriously jeopardized his chances for a decisive non-contested re-election. As witnessed only two years later, in the chaotic aftermath of Orange Democratic Movement presidential candidate Raila Odinga's rejection, of Kibaki's win. A rather unpleasant history that proponents of the Odinga and President Uhuru Kenyatta led building bridges referendum push know too well as they lead the charge to a plebiscite projected to be the single greatest factor in the 2022 Kenyatta succession question. What we are doing is just starting. And just starting with that that is most critical. Dealing with the issues that make us consistently fight the issues of inclusion and inclusivity. But how is the BBI referendum likely to affect the Kenyatta succession? And how could the pre-referendum campaigns in pains influence formation of pre-election coalitions? ANC party. Perhaps the first to give the strongest indication of how seriously he takes the BBI referendum in relation to the 2022 polls is one Wycliffe Musalia Mudavadi with his recent announcement that ANC would be undertaking a lone BBI popularization drive with an independent secretariat. A move analysts argue is Musalia's own attempt to posture himself as his own man on the pre-2022 negotiation table should the BBI referendum bill sell through. Odinga, on the other side, it appears, will take charge of the main pro-BBI campaigns. As Kenyatta, constitutionally barred from the 2022 State House race, concentrates his efforts at restabilizing his already wobbly legacy, dented by chaos following his bitterly disputed 2017 re election, and the raging COVID 19 pandemic, whose key casualty is the badly battered economy. Odinga's bandwagon likely to rope in Wiper leader Kalonzo Musioka and Fort Kenya's Moses Otangula both of who are yet to announce any independent BBI popularization drives. Key handlers of the top referendum proponents already scheming for a kill from key BBI recommendations, including the expected return of executive power to parliament with the appointment of members of the National Assembly as cabinet ministers, their assistants and the powerful post of prime minister and two deputies. The challenge is to Kenyans. Uh, make sure the person you are sending to parliament is a person who has uh, the stature and uh, the composure to be able to sit and fill this at the same level with the cabinet secretary. More importantly, we've just reordered our politics. If you want to be the leader of government, you go for the presidency. But if you also want to be the leader of opposition, you go for the presidency knowing that if you fall short, you are on the opposition benches. It is now upon the political parties to come up with a credible uh, leadership positions of uh, members of parliament who will be elected from the constituencies so that uh, when they are going to appoint ministers, they appoint ministers uh, who are credible. Yet one man perhaps holds the key to the question on the intensity of the looming plebiscite. Deputy President William Ruto, who has consistently been a formidable critic of the BBI, a stand that has seemingly been music to the ears of the Kenyatta Odinga Pro BBI camp, which is keen on blocking Ruto's 2022 State House bid. Yet should Ruto remain lukewarm as he did recently when his troops were split in the Senate over the county revenue sharing stalemate, the Deputy President analysts argue 
could lose steam of his anti-Odinga campaign that had already modeled him into the likeliest Odinga rival in the 2022 polls. On the other hand, a decision by Ruto to back the BBI would ramp him up onto the already crowded list of 2022 presidential hopefuls backing the document, including Odinga, Kanu's national chairman Gideon Moy, Kalonzo, and Mudavadi. Look at them. Even then, such BBI proponents as Jubilee Party Vice Chair David Murade argue should that happen, Ruto would have to contest the BBI formation's presidential candidature. Against the rest, Atalewe. never mind that the deputy president appears unwanted in the camp. Constitution making is uh, a give and take exercise. Uh, we may have to uh, take a bit and also uh, give a bit, but um, the final conclusion will be when our, our, our consultants have uh, already shared with what they have. As long as a substantial number of people then support the document, then it has to go. Because otherwise then, if we are looking for a 100% consensus, it might take us ages. You cannot develop a country unless there is peace and tranquility and stability. Raila has guaranteed us. Now, in the opposite are people who have no time for that peace and stability for development to happen. And they are talking about tokenism. Politics, they say, is just as dynamic as the changing times, and the BBI certainly will radically recalibrate the 2022 politics, whichever way the referendum goes. Murumi Mwangkitia News in Nairobi. Murumi Mwangkitia setting the stage for our conversation.